Hello, friends, and welcome to this 72nd episode of Friday Fruit Clips. Glory to God and praise to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you're new, I want you to go ahead and smash down forcefully upon that subscribe button. Do it like you mean it. There is no time to waste. Go ahead and get her down, amigo. Now, Friday Fruit Clips is my award-winning, cutting-edge, critically acclaimed weekly YouTube series where we shine the light of Christ onto the spiritually criminal acts of Christian pretenders, false prophets, those that would corrupt the Word of God. Let's go ahead and show our banner scripture, Ephesians 5.11, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. And that means to expose them. Now, as you're watching my video here, you may experience some unintentional side effects of both laughter and anger. It's weird because it's a combination of the ridiculous and witnessing open blasphemy of our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But either way, we're going to expose it in the hopes that many will depart from these fruitcakes and come back to the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So. I've got some pretty fruity clips picked out. They're ready to go. And if you're ready, grab some sugar babies and a cold Shasta. Get comfy and let's kick this door in. Are you ready? All right, let's do it. All right, so first up today, we've got an old favorite of Freddy Fruit Clips. I haven't shown her in a while, so we're checking in to see how she's doing. Lois Vogel Sharp, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so for those of you that have heard her before, you know why I'm laughing. Uh, it's actually so bad, it's so fruity that sometimes you just laugh, just look, you just can't believe that anybody actually believes this nonsense. Uh, but Lois is a confirmed false prophetess and well, our friends, uh, Alabama Woodsman and George Gastone, they've done some great work in exposing her. Certainly check out their channels and their content and, of course, subscribe. But Lois, as of late, she's really changed things up as far as her delivery. She, uh, you know, she doesn't appear before world leaders, like presidents or prime ministers or princes, anything like that. No, she, uh, she lays down her dope rap prophecies from the comfort of the passenger seat of her car. She just presses record, and somehow she's able to convince her listeners that, well, she, she's really delivering words of God. And so this is very troubling. Now, I'm gonna play about a two minute prophecy from Lois, and this may be a bit of an endurance challenge for most. See if you can make it all the way through without having a nervous breakdown at just the raw silliness of this all. Go ahead and roll it, Becky. Back, and then listen to what the spirit says here. <clears throat> Kamala Harris, who's not from Paris. Joe Biden, who's still lying. Twiddly D and twiddly dumb. They truly are the team that will not have won. Time for America to take a look at my son. His name is Yeshua, and he's the one on the throne you all should have known. Because the man that's chosen to follow me must hear my plea and America's true destiny. Not Harris, not Paris, not socialism, not schism, no taking control from the children's parents. That should be apparent. But the foolishness of man... It's hard to understand when he fights for freedom and then decides to leave him. That is a cause without purpose, and it hurts us. So what are you going to do? This is still not through, and there is time to change your mind and come and dine with me, those who are mine. Parents do not allow the government to make decisions for your children. It's not some pilgrimage. It's torture for children cannot decide for themselves when they're not even 12. Use some common sense. It's your defense against the evil of your day, which is to take your freedoms away. 
don't let this government stay. Cast them away. They have nothing true to say. Do not delay. Get out and vote today. How about I just go eat some hay? I can make things out of clay and lay by the bay I just made. Trump by Forrest Gump. He's the one who's been up front. The other side lies. You must decide who is right and who is wrong so America can once again sing my songs of freedom, justice, and liberty for all. That's from the father. Okay, so, wow, where do I start? Uh, did she... <laughs> Did she actually say Kamala Harris, who's not from Paris? <laughs> it's just crazy. Do you think that's like an important detail that God would want to put into this alleged prophecy? Kamala Harris, who's not from Paris. Like there were some people out there thinking, hey, hey, Herb, is Kamala Harris from Paris? Anyway, sorry. Uh, so what is Lois doing here? Well, she, like so many other false prophets, well, she's degrading and reducing our God to being nothing more than a writer of what, Dr. Seuss children's rhymes because Lois, well, she's unlearned and she's childish. She mocks the living God as you know, God that's out there giving second grade rhyming poems in lieu of the actual or actual biblical scripture. And, and did she actually say that God said, Trump, my Forrest Gump. I'm not a smart man. Golly, I don't know what to say. Uh, I could say good grief. It's crazy. So Lois again hijacking the salvation of Jesus Christ and turning it into nothing more than a political commercial for Donald Trump. Now, where's the damage? Here's the damage. Someone broken. Somebody's out there. They're searching for meaning. They're searching for the one true God is found through Jesus Christ. They need the salvation of Jesus Christ. And they come across this nonsense. You know, they may think that Christianity is false because even a lost person can hear this and conclude easily that it's crazy. And so they'll apply that to Jesus based on the fact that they perceive that, what, she's a prophet, she's a Christian leader. And so they'll conclude that it's all silliness and they'll shut that door all because of Lois can't keep her narcissistic mouth shut. She is degrading and blaspheming and certainly drawing great reproach onto the good name of Jesus Christ. So, as always, uh, stay away from this false prophet and mark and avoid her as we conclude this first segment, and let's move on. All right, so next up we've got, well, there he is. Daniel Adams, Demon Slayer Superhero. <laughs> so, uh, Daniel, well, he's an unqualified preacher slash Demon Slayer. Now, if there were a word stronger than narcissism, it still wouldn't be strong enough to describe Daniel Adams' ego. To say that this man's in love with himself, well, it's much understated. So... Normally, uh, when we feature Captain Supplements here, uh, we usually show some action clips where, you know, he's performing his fake acts of demon deliverance. But today, we're going to listen to some clips where, well, he's preaching. Oh, but no, he's not preaching the gospel. No, th these are clips of Daniel preaching about, well, himself and how awesome he is. So... Uh, he's in Australia, and he's prepping the crowd to receive awesome superhero things that only he can do. And so the gullible followers are there to receive all of this. We're going to listen uh, to, well, we've got about four or five clips here, and we will uh, listen and comment as we go. Let's roll that first one. All right. I am going to bless you tonight and tell you how awesome you are, because that's what you are, and it is just it is what it is. I'm not here to look at your sin. You're looking at it too much already. Why am I going to just show you your sin some more? <laughs> All right, so right off the bat, Daniel is telling him what he's going to do. He's, uh, he's prepping the victims. Well, I'm not going to preach the gospel. 
I don't care if there's anybody out there that needs to actually get saved and hear the salvation of Jesus Christ to be convicted of their sins and to repent of their sins. No, he's, uh, he's going to tell them that they're awesome. You'll also, I can't even do his accent. I don't know what that is, but of course the audience claps with approval. So certainly no gospel being preached tonight. They paid good money to be entertained with itchy, tickly ear stuff. And Daniel says, I'll oblige you, sir. We're going to have some fun tonight. So there you go. First clip. Let's watch the second one. The woman caught in the, in the act of adultery. He got around some of the dirtiest people. And they became clean. Boom. Amazing, isn't it? So that's why I can come into any country, by the grace of God, any place, and people get close to me and they become clean because I have the revelation of the truth. You know, one thing about Daniel, it's always I and me and me and I, 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 me, me, me. It's always about him. And for the record, he does not have the revelation of truth. If he actually did, he'd be preaching the gospel. He'd be getting people saved. He would care about their sin and about people breaking free of that and getting saved. But Daniel here, well, he's glorifying himself. He's bragging before this audience. And sadly, I think he actually believes his own hype. That, you know, when somebody comes into his presence, well, they become clean. And here's the here's the fact, folks. Daniel doesn't cast out demons. He imparts demons. He imparts demons. He's unqualified. Uh, but think of the stupidity of this claim. If that were true, he wouldn't need to put on his theatrical shows where, you know, he does his spirit kicking and slaying and uh, talking to demons and casting them out. By his own words, if he was there, they're all in the presence of Daniel, they would all become clean. So, anyway, there you go. Let's move on to the next clip. Yes, I promise. I'm over here because God has sent me here to wake somebody else up to get the job done. And I wonder who it's going to be in this place. There's always one. They get electrified. Electrified. And their life gets changed forever. Some of you in this room tonight, you have barren wombs. After tonight, you will produce children. Now, friends, try to imagine the cruelty of this statement. Daniel stood up there and he said, well, some of you here tonight who have barren wombs, well, guess what? You're going to be able to have a baby. I guess just based on the fact that, well, because Daniel's there. Imagine this cruelty. Daniel Adams toys with people's lives. This unbiblical meathead who has zero authority in Jesus Christ is standing on stage making these miraculous claims and boasts. And it's just terrible. What happens? Well, you've got simple-minded couples that are both in that audience and watching online who may have been struggling to have a baby. And now this wicked fraud gives them this false hope he does this in the name of Jesus Christ, but again, he has no authority to do this. He's toying with lives. He's wrecking people. Well, what happens? Well, these people go home with this false hope, and time passes, and they're still unable to have a baby. Well, guess what? Their faith shipwrecks, specifically because of what Daniel Adams did there in that building on that night. They conclude that, well, either Jesus isn't real or Jesus doesn't love them. Either way, they walk away from Jesus Christ because of what this alleged man of God prophesied. It's an absolute tragedy. You've got to really hate your fellow mankind to give this type of false hope. Uh, I can imagine, again, these couples, all they want is a baby, and they hear this clown say, yeah, it's going to happen, and it doesn't happen. This man is going to answer for this wickedness on Judgment Day. When God chose me to do what I do today, I didn't know I would be chosen for this. And, but I noticed that I was going through life, I've just, I felt different. Yeah, 
you just like, I feel different. What is this feeling? And you're trying to tell everybody you're different. And you, lo- you notice you started liking all the fantasy stuff and the, the cool superhero stuff. And, you know, you just wanted to be that guy or that girl, superhero, or whatever. And the whole time the Lord is showing you an image of what he's making you. He's showing you that you will have superpowers from him one day. Right? So don't let your neighborhood deliverance minister demonize what you watched as a child. It was a prophetic replication. God was using him what he had to to get your attention. So yes, he could have used that Disney movie to get your attention. What? Disney? Yes, man. My goodness, who can hear this? This is so hard to hear. This is so hard to watch. Watching this man pace back and forth while he corrupts the body of Christ. Children have hijacked the gospel. Daniel Adams is a child. And he's literally telling you that. No one in the audience is objecting. Nobody's outraged. In fact, they love it. They're clapping. And he stands up there. Hey, remember those Disney movies? You know, the Hollywood billion dollar company that only exists to mock God, tear down and corrupt morals and values. Yeah, God probably used that company to, what, draw you closer to him. My goodness. In a way, though, he might be right. None of the audience cares about doctrine. You could call them, what, a false gospel Disney fairy fantasy generation. This is crazy. Daniel Adams mocks Jesus Christ. What is going on? Let me show you something. In the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 11, let's start, let's read 13, 14, and 15. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. This is Daniel Adams. He is disguised. He is false. He does not represent Jesus Christ. He does not teach the gospel. He only exalts himself and wishes to corrupt anybody that he can get to listen to him. And so with that, I'm very glad we got this documented. This man is just terrible. Uh, certainly pray for him. Uh, but in the, in the meantime, certainly mark and avoid him. And with that, let's move on to our next segment. You are a meathead. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I've got to muster up a little bit of strength here to do this next segment because, well, it's Julie Green ladies and gentlemen. And yes, we are here to document yet another false prophecy. I'm going to show you two clips where she prophesies, right? She says that God says that Kamala Harris will not be the Democratic nominee for the presidential race. Of course, we indeed know that Kamala is the nominee. And so yet again, Julie Green is wrong. I know, right? This This is my shocked face. It's just so shocking. In any case, I'm going to play these clips back to back, and then we'll comment on the other side. Roll it, Becky. So Kamala, it is for the time. For the next phase is about to begin. I told you, she wasn't the replacement. I told you, she wasn't the replacement. They will start to expose her and her secrets. Just watch more unprecedented things will pick up pace and start to expose her even more. It depends on how this thing goes. This is what the Lord has been really dealing with me about. Um, If the whole replacement of the Biden, which I will get into, because even though they are trying to use Kamala, the Lord has been saying since 2021, that's not his replacement. Um, it looks like it's she's his replacement right now. That's just appeasing people right this second. All right, so you heard Julie. She says the Lord has been saying, meaning not just once, but continuously, uh, that Kamala will not be the Democratic nominee. And, of course, we know that she is. She is. Her name will be on the ballot. And so this is false prophecy. 
So I guess this will put Julie at about, well, over 125 confirmed false prophecies. It's absolutely terrifying for this woman. She has no fear of God and no fear that she is sowing corruption into a large part of the body of Christ while well, she absolutely shipwrecks them. So the other thing that I worry, I should say wonder about, is what does it take for a follower of Julie Green to finally wake up? God said that if anyone falsely prophesies even one time, they're done. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 20 through 22. One false prophecy was all it takes. Here we've got Julie at over 125 confirmed false prophecies. It's not a debate. These are false prophecies. And they still refuse to biblically reject her. Yet they profess to love Jesus. It's so disheartening. But how is that going to go on Judgment Day when these people have to give an account to why they willingly continue to support this woman? It's, wow really quite terrifying. In any case, we've got it documented and we can end this quick segment and move on to our final one. Continue to mark and avoid this woman. All right, so rounding off the show today, we are with Notorious False Prophet and all-around Butterbean Doppelganger, Brandon Biggs, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> he is one of the most over-the-top, ridiculous storytellers on the internet. Take a look at this video. You can see the title. I want you to note the amount of views here. Over 200,000. This guy has some reach. And so as we're listening, well, let me say this. I'm not sure that I need to, but I do feel compelled to give the listener a warning uh, that after listening to a couple of clips, your head might explode because this is some of the dopiest, goofiest, infantile spewage you may ever hear coming from an internet false prophet. And so we've got some clips to watch. So ooh, get ready. Brandon says that, well, Jesus appeared to him and took him time traveling and so brandon saw some stuff and he's going to tell us about that today and so with that well roll it butterbean now i'm going to go into uh what the lord showed me in the time timeline again okay so the timeline i'm going to be uh i'm going to tell you detail of what the lord showed me when he showed he came to me as a, a massive fiery light and the light was so bright it literally i i felt my spiritual eyes my whole body i felt like i was melting it i i, I literally said lord if you don't take the and dim the light down and do something i feel like it's going to kill me like it's going to burn me up and he and all of a sudden because he knew it he, he was so intense and i'm telling you in any intensity i've never seen anything like this before in my life he took something and he shielded himself and i and it was where i he could it was like a shield and all of the light that was shining upon my face where where i was it felt like it was blinding me it came in it, it it came out the side of it came out the side of the shield and the light was still going but it was being shaded and i could see up in it and all of a sudden a massive dove comes out of it with his wings flapping with the olive branch coming and it, it came over the top of me. Okay, so here's what we've got so far. Uh, Jesus showed up. Light was too bright. Jesus had to shield himself with a thing and a giant dove with an olive branch in his mouth came out from the thing and flew over the top of Brandon. Okay. I don't think so. No. Whenever he took me on the timeline... And he took me by year. It was like he could fast forward it on a DVD player or a uh, well VCR. I know people don't use VCRs now, but like a, like a recorder, and you could speed it up. But I could see the years panning out, like like going really really fast. 
moving in front of my face like building in Legos, and it was... All new Lego games. Build the Minotaurus game. Each one, I could see the faces of the people that were ruling in that time. All right, so I suppose this is a good time to pause just to check and see if anyone's head has exploded yet. Perhaps you felt anger rising up in you, and yes, that would be normal because we're witnessing a child pretend to be a prophet of God. He's hijacked grace, he's hijacked the gospel, and he's turned it into, again, an infantile time travel story to include, yes, Legos. You heard that right. Hard to believe that we are actually facing this. But he's not done yet. Let's, uh, let's push on. So then he takes me to the garden, and I see Adam, and he is ripped. He is not a uh, like plumpy looking dude like me. I'm still working on it. Um, he has muscles, and he has a black looking beard, and he's olive skinned. He's not. Um, I did. I only seen his backside with the glory around him. He had no clothes on in the natural. He had a glory around him. Okay, but he had a. Um, he had a black looking hair and it went into his beard and his black, he had a black beard and it was perfect. Okay. All right. Not that I even needed to catch that contradiction. Well, but there you have it. I only seen his backside, but he had a perfect black beard, which is on his face, which is on the front side and nobody catches it, but there you go. Also, just for the record, I think I am down about 25,000 brain cells and I'm getting dizzy. So let's, uh, let's uh, try to continue here. So he was there and he was, he was communicating to this big lizard looking dinosaur thing that was like a, uh, like on like Jurassic Park, massive long neck looking dinosaur. And he was, communicating to this dinosaur i could see him pointing his finger at this dinosaur and the dinosaur was looking down and was understanding what he was saying kind of like how we talk to our dogs or our, our cat or whatever he was communicating to this massive dinosaur and it was looking down at him and people said well i didn't think prehistoric ages we're, we're in the uh, the earth at that time or whatever, and, and, and dinosaurs and T-Rexes and all that stuff. Well, this lizard thing was... Oh, brother, this guy stinks! So then he showed me um, Noah, and I could see Noah, and I could see him building the ark, okay? But I could notice his nose, I believe it was Noah, there was a man... And he had a really massive white looking beard, but his nose was ginormous. It was, <laughs> so it sounds weird, but his nose was huge. It had a big, big, he had a big nose and he had gray hair and he, he looked like he had a hat on, like the Lord of the Rings, like the Lord of the Rings. Right, so is this not one of the most moronic, infantile displays of mindless drivel you've ever heard? Lord of the Rings? Wowzers. And what was that, like a 30-minute description on Noah's nose? I guess, I guess that was really important. Brandon really wanted us to know how big Noah's nose was. Absolutely fantastic. Also, remember, this guy commanded 200,000 people to watch this video. And the majority of those viewers think that this is real. Oh, one more thing. There's no gospel anywhere. Just pointing out the obvious. No one is getting saved through Butterbean's fantasy fraudulence here. A little bit more. Hang in there with me, folks. But I could notice the people around him were all dark looking. They were evil. They didn't look. Their, their countenance were dirty. And they had dirty looking faces. They were dirty, like dirty, like real dirt, like real, like greasy looking. Like, I don't know, but there was people. So there's Brandon Biggs, ladies and gentlemen. He felt it was very important that you understood how dirty the people around Noah were. Just very dirty, greasy, dirty. Even the dirt was dirty, I guess. Here again is Brandon making sure that he embellishes insignificant 
details on his fantasy story. It's just so ridiculous. Right? He does this because he needs to embellish his very obvious lying. And uh, with that, we're, this is going to be the last clip. I don't think we can take much more because all this man does is degrade the gospel of Jesus Christ because he doesn't preach the gospel. He's one of the worst storytellers on YouTube. And yes, he's a confirmed false prophet. He's a child who thinks, well, this is just all fun. He loves the attention that he gets on social media. But make no mistake, he will answer for this buffoonery. So let's go ahead and take a look at some scripture. Here we are in the book of Ephesians, chapter 4. I'm going to scroll down. We're going to read to verse 14. That we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. And friends, that's what we're seeing here in our time. All they want to do is exalt themselves. All they want to do is tell their fantasy stories. And what that's going to do is pull you away from the truth of Jesus Christ. It's going to pull you away from biblical knowledge. And that's how we grow faith. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. So please be encouraged to do so. Get into your prayer closet. Get into your Bible and seek the Lord biblically. And with that, we're going to wrap everything up here. All right, everybody, that's going to do it for this 72nd episode of Friday Fruit Clips. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. Please remember to pray for these that are caught up in the delusion of following these false teachers and these false prophets. Pray that God would open their eyes and that they would see the silliness and come back to the true gospel of Jesus Christ. Also, pray for the false prophets. Pray that, well, they would also be convicted for treading underfoot the precious gospel and that they would shut down their fake ministries and repent. Also, if you'd like to support my ministry, you certainly can. Go right down into the description and there's a couple of different ways you can do that. And I truly thank you. So let's close with this verse right here. John chapter 4, verse 23. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. It's more important than ever, folks. Truth and sincerity. And, oh, all right, so that's going to do it. Another episode in the can. Right now, the wife just got here. She's ready. The staff is ready. They're waiting at the door. We're headed over to... Where are we going? Oh, Chippewa Falls. We're going to load up on a fresh catch of trout. Yummy. Sounds wonderful. So, I'm going to go ahead and hit the lights and set the alarm. The credits. Well, Becky says they're ready. Make sure you watch those. So, as we depart from each other this week, there's just one more thing that you've got to remember. And that is to always stay fruity. We'll see you next time, guys. God bless. Watch this. Oh, hallelujah.
don't you? Watch them fall, 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 and fail, fail, fail. Watch them be removed, removed, removed.